Are you currently suffering from back pain that seems to be worse on one side? Hey everyone, this is Dr. Zach Green here, Performance Sport and Spine. In today's video, I'll be discussing SI joint pain. So the SI joint is in the pelvis, which is below the lumbar spine or the low back. The SI joint is comprised of the sacrum and the ilium, and we have two, a left and a right. It's also important to note that there's extensive ligaments to provide stability. SI joint pain is estimated to make about 25% of all low back pain cases worldwide. What does this condition feel like? It most commonly presents as dull, achy pain localized to the irritated joint, so the left or the right, but it can also present as more localized, generalized pain anywhere from the inferior margins to the gluteal folds. It's also important to note that this SI joint can refer pain down the leg. So if we look at this image right here, you can see the different areas that it commonly presents. What causes this condition? It's a combination of axial loading and rotation that irritates the joint and the surrounding tissues, most notably the ligaments. And it's important to note that this can be an acute trauma or an accumulative overload. There's this prominent belief with back pain that it must be caused by some structural flaw, like a slip disc or the pelvis's move. But again, these structures are very strong, so it's important to know this is irritation or sensitivity, not damage. Your pelvis has not slipped out of place causing your pain. The tissues are pissed off. We'll cover this in more detail later. Here's some posture and activity modifications to be aware of. With SI joint pain, unilateral loading or putting more weight on one leg is often the most aggravating activity, so reducing or temporarily avoiding these activities is gonna be really helpful. Vacuuming, especially under objects, running, going up or down stairs, lunges, and then getting in and out of your car. And for standing, sometimes there's a ligament on the backside called the sacral tubeous ligament that can get irritated. So standing in a position I would are on the right may be helpful because it places less stress on the ligament, and the one on the left will put more stress on the ligament. Again, this will affect all patients, but some people find this really beneficial. Now we're gonna go over the exercise and rehabilitation portion of this video. But again, remember that SI joint doesn't like unilateral loading, so we're gonna start on two legs, build up strength, and then gradually progress to one leg. The box squat. With a bench or box about 18 inches high, with our feet in a good position, we're gonna squat down, loading our hips, and then stand up, keeping our weight on our midfoot. Again, slow and controlled, and you wanna use your legs, not your back. Initially, if this is too challenging, some other alternatives are the glute bridge or the ball wall squat. The goblet squat. So holding a light kettlebell or dumbbell at chest level, we're gonna squat down using that same technique as previous and then stand back up, emphasizing our legs and hips and not our back, keeping weight over the midfoot. As you increase confidence in this, remove the box and or increase the weight that you're holding. At this point, we're gonna to progress to the single leg loading, but it's important to know that you should have no or minimal pain in the previous exercises before progressing. The backwards lunge. In a standing position, place one leg behind you with your heel off the floor. Placing your hands on your pelvis, we're gonna drop straight down to the floor and then stand back up. Try to keep your hips, shoulders, and head all in alignment. And again, weight over your midfoot of the front leg and try to not let the torso lean forward and use your legs to drive up and down. Initially, if you need some stability, just place a hand or a couple of fingers on the wall and then maintain that motion. And then over time, as you build confidence, remove your hand. To increase the difficulty, hold a light weight in the arm of the leg that's gonna move. Again, step back, keeping your heel off the floor. Lunge down, keeping your torso upright, and then stand up with your legs and repeat. The Bulgarian split squat. With a bench behind you, place one leg up on it, keeping your weight over your front leg, we're gonna go down towards the floor, keep an upright torso, and then stand up. You should feel most tension over that front leg, but again, go as down as far as you can, and then stand up. Initially, if you need some stability, you can place your hand against a wall or hold a pole, and then remove as you build confidence. To increase the difficulty, hold a weight in the arm of the leg that's on the floor, and again, lower down to the floor, stand up using that anterior thigh, and keep an upright torso. Some risk factors for this condition are, if you have a leg length inequality of greater than 20 millimeters, prolonged rigorous physical activity, if you have a scoliosis or your spine is curved more than 30 degrees, or lumbar fusions. Now we're gonna talk about can this joint move? You may have heard from some medical practitioner that your pain is caused because your pelvis has slipped out of place or twisted, or you have an upslip or a downslip. 
but what does the evidence actually say? So this great paper looked at this and they found with a high degree of precision that the joint only moves about two degrees in any of the three planes. So your joint can get irritated, but it's incredibly strong. So it's really important that when you're moving, even though you can maybe have pain, your bones can't go out of place. And then to further collaborate on this, this paper found that people's pain was reduced with their joint position changing. Again, the pain felt better, but there was no mechanical change to the joint. And why this is important is if you look online, you're going to see a ton of techniques or mobilizations to help reset your pelvis. And again, they may help reduce your pain. But it's important to note that this is not because they're resetting or moving your joints. For clinical assessment, there's lots of different tests out there. Some are helpful, some are not. This paper found that there's no evidence on which to base acceptance of mobility tests for SI joint pain into daily practice. Therefore, tests that are looking for mobility aren't effective. Again, this joint only moves about two degrees. However, there are some good and helpful tests. Those are the Lasset 5, and the active straight leg raise. For women that become pregnant, this can also be an issue because the hormones change the ligaments. As the baby increases in size, the anterior pelvic tilt or the pelvis shifts to compensate for that, which can place excess stress on the side joint. But again, there really isn't any specific exercise and it's just important to do any exercise and keep the whole body strong and active. For this condition, radial frequency denervation is a common technique to use to treat it, but how effective is it? So this technique uses radio frequencies to disrupt the nerve supply to the pain generating tissues. But it was found that it was no more effective than PT at three months. And again, it can help reduce SI joint pain, but it's unlikely to completely eliminate it. Lastly, there are other conditions that can irritate the SI joint that are more medically serious that we'll cover now. Ankylosing spondylitis, reactive arthritis, psoriatic arthritis, ankylosing spondylitis, reactive arthritis, psoriatic arthritis, or enteric arthritis. For these conditions, it's important to have blood work, imaging, and refer out to a specialist immediately. Thank you so much for watching our video on SI joint pain. We hope you found it helpful. If you did, please like our video and subscribe to our channel, and don't forget to check out our other videos.